Yes, you read the title of the video correctly. We, the obedient people of God, will be saved from his soon coming wrath, but not in ways those that preach smooth things have been declaring since the end times began. Many preach a secret rapture and a seven-year tribulation theory that declares we shall be saved from this trying time in prophetic history by twisting many prophetic verses way out of context. But the truth is, Jesus Christ himself asked his Father when he was in prayer right before being arrested and crucified in John 17 that we, the Christian people, should not be taken from the world, but kept from the evil in it. Question. Was not Noah and his family still on the planet during the flood that killed all life on earth? Was not the Jewish nation present during the ten plagues of Egypt, when Pharaoh was ignoring the warnings of God through Moses? The seed of Abraham was spared, mainly because they were believers at that time who were to be protected by the God of the Bible. Like Noah and his family, they never left the earth either. And so I have to ask, are we, the end-time bride of Christ, any different today? No, we are not. In fact, this same God that could have removed Noah and his family, or even the Jews that were in Egypt, this same God will not remove his people today until the great and dreadful day when the final plague hits the planet and all the lost souls die. For it is written in Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. And in Hebrews 13, 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But as we know, Satan just loves to make our God out to be a liar as well as make his word appear to contradict itself. And so, just as the Lord spared Noah and his family in the ark that prevented certain death in the flood, and the destroying angel that passed over the houses of the believers so the plague of death would not harm them in Egypt, the God of the Bible also plans to spare his obedient remnant people when the plagues of Revelation fall upon this earth. Noah is told, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, because the Lord was planning to bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein the breath of life was. The Jews were told to place the blood of the lamb upon their doorposts, so the plague that killed all the firstborn of the land, both man and beast, would not harm them, because the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And when it comes to the remnant people alive in the last days when the Lord returns, not only will they go forth to ready a people for the return of Christ in the same spirit of Elijah that John the Baptist had so as to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. These very same obedient souls will remain on earth during the plagues when God's wrath falls, knowing that it was promised in Psalm 91.10 that there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. The Lord protected his own in the Old Testament by the ark, as well as by the blood of the lamb sacrifice, and he promises to protect us, New Testament believers, by the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Both sets of believers show their faith in the blood of Christ, do they not? The Old Testament believers trusted God by a show of faith by placing the blood of the Lamb upon the doorposts of their homes. We have the blood of the Lamb upon the doorposts of our hearts. For is it not already declared in 1 Corinthians 3.16 that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And notice this. If we are supposed to have been raptured up before the plagues hit, as the many false prophets keep claiming, why is the word of God plainly stating the plagues never come near our dwellings? According to these apostate preachers today, the Christians won't be in their dwellings. But the Bible says otherwise. And the reason they preach these lies is because, as the prophet Isaiah predicted, the people sitting in the church demand that the pastors prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. That way they can stay calm. And so to keep the people in the pews, so as to keep the money flowing into the pastor's pocket, the preachers of filthy lucre did just that by inventing the smooth lies about a secret rapture that says the people won't be here when God's wrath falls. If you would like to know who invented the false prophecies regarding a secret rapture and a seven-year tribulation period that nearly all the Christian world wonders after today, see the two pages that are listed on the screen right now. Most Christians have told me they were shocked to see how many Bible verses there are in the Word of God that actually speak of the second coming of Jesus Christ because their pastors never shared those verses with them, knowing that in so doing, their congregation will discover three things about their pastors. Number one, 
They are lying about what happens at the second coming. Number two, they have no clue as to how to define Christian prophecy. And number three, they now know the people that are leaving the church, they now know their pastors are, in fact, the ravenous wolves seeking to make merchandise of them just as the Bible predicted for these last days. The people that read these studies that I posted on the screen here, they were also shocked to discover by those verses, as well as the mountain of historic referencing that the Great Tribulation has already been documented to have been fulfilled with the deaths of hundreds of millions of Christians at the hands of the very same church leaders that invented the false prophecies to hide their true identity as Antichrist. What's actually coming next, according to Bible prophecy, is called the time of Jacob's trouble. It is the hope of this ministry that every Christian makes straight their paths for the coming of the Lord. Thank you for watching. God bless.